Hi, it's Liz. And I am just here today to talk about something that's hard to talk about and why it's hard to talk about it. <laughs> um, and that is feelings of being suicidal. So in this video, I am going to talk in some detail about suicidal thoughts and feelings. So if that is not something that is good for you right now, please don't watch the rest of this video. Um, this is a topic that's been hitting home for me lately because I have been going through some dips into depression and suicidal ideation and um, it's I've learned a lot in the last few years about this because before that you know I had had some serious depressions I had two serious depressions and definitely some suicidal ideation and an attempt when I was young but that wasn't really my my normal. Um, my normal was manic, which I've also been kind of trying to stave off mania as well lately. It's I've just been really um, emotionally stressed. But um, what's my point? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit drugged up because I'm trying to keep myself functional. Um, Yeah, so I've learned a lot about these feelings because I've been experiencing them on a more regular basis since I had my daughter. It changed my hormones and that has affected my mental health. So one thing that has really kind of surprised me because it's so different from mania is just how hard it is to reach out when you start getting into a, a place of serious depression and for me that always comes with some level of suicidal ideation it's it's really hard to reach out and I think for people who haven't experienced it it may not really make sense it may seem like well why don't you just call a hotline, you know, why don't you just reach out to your friends and, you know, w why didn't you? I mean, and for one thing, you know, a lot of people do and they're not listened to. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> that's a whole other topic. Um, it's just, it's, it's hard in ways that are difficult to explain. So I'm going to try to explain. So for one thing, there's just the purely sort of physiological, neurological, and emotional side of it, um, of depression, <clears throat> that just makes it hard to do things. It's hard to do things. You know, your physical body may be able to, your mouth might be able to say the words, but, you know, your brain is really in charge of everything you do. And when your brain is m not working well and moving really slowly, you, you really can't do things. You know, if your brain is blocking you from doing something, you really can't do it. Um, and it you know, makes sense, I think, when you put it that way. But a lot of times people think, well, just think about it differently or, you know, just have a different attitude. But it doesn't work like that because there's something physiological going on in your brain when you're depressed like that that makes it difficult or even impossible to do certain things. So there's that. There's also these deep feelings of being worthless. And I think many of us who are in a depression, we deeply do not want to bother other people. We're very conscious of the fact that we might be seen as manipulative, that we might be seen as dramatic, and we might on a certain level also feel 
like we're being overly dramatic if we actually express what we've been feeling, which seems weird, right? I'm going to try to explain this because it is weird. Um, because there's this, there's this dual thing where on the one hand, like you might be having these thoughts that are very disturbing. You know, you're having these very detailed thoughts about, you know, how you're going to commit suicide, um, what you're going to use, where you're going to go, when you're going to do it. You know, you want to make sure the kids aren't home, you know, you want to make sure whatever, you know, how are, what are you going to do with your things? You know, um, you start thinking about this stuff seriously and planning it all out. But, uh, but at the same time, there's part of you that's kind of, at least for me, there's part, there's, there's part of you that's kind of mocking it. Like, you're not really going to do this. You're just being ridiculous. You know, no matter, that voice even kind of gets louder, the more seriously you get into these thoughts. And then, so on the one hand, you really want to do this. You start really wanting to die. You really want to die. On another hand, you're really terrified of the fact that you might actually go through with this because you don't, part of you doesn't want to. And then there's a whole other part of you that's just mocking the other two parts. <laughs> that's just saying like, this is all stupid. You're stupid. This is stupid. So you don't want to tell people because part of you thinks, you know, that would be overly dramatic. You know, that would be, it's not really that bad. You start minimizing it. Which is, again, it's difficult to explain because it's not really, it's not rational because that's, that's coexisting with also being in terror and really wanting help really wanting somebody to walk you off that ledge, you know, but it's all, all of those feelings are, are there and they're all really powerful. But the fear of being, um, the, f the fear of inconveniencing people and being a burden I mean, because for a lot of us, too, part of the reason that we want to die is because we feel that we are a burden or that we have become a burden. So we don't want to further burden people by making them listen to our disturbing innermost thoughts or, you know, making them take us seriously. Because, like, obviously that's a lot to ask of someone. And there's a lot of people who um, may not want to do that too. They may not want to serve that role in our lives. And then you have to deal with the possibility that you might get rejected, that you might be judged. Um, and that's something else that could push you over the edge. So it's a risk that you're taking as well by reaching out. I know for me, one of the dominant things was, and I'm thinking of one particular episode that I had about a year ago, um, and it was a period of time where, you know, I had family around me and there were people who wanted to help, but they didn't actually understand that I was depressed because I didn't tell anybody. Um, I think they were getting frustrated with me because, you know, when you're depressed, you're not really functioning as well. So I think they thought that I was, I don't know what, being lazy or something. And I didn't want to tell anyone I was very deeply depressed and very um, seriously contemplating suicide at that point. Because um, I was ashamed. So I just, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't tell them. 
And part of it's difficult to even put into words because it's not like a specific, there isn't a name that I can think of for this feeling, but I guess it's related to being dissociated and detached, um, which goes along with depression for me. Uh, I just feel like everyone's really far away and trying to reach out to somebody would be like screaming over a chasm. I don't, I, it's like I don't know how to reach anybody. Everybody feels a million miles away. And it, it seems like no matter what I do, I'm going to be all alone. And that's sort of a further blockage to reaching out. So, yeah, I don't know if this even really sums it up. My computer is running out of memory though, so I have to stop recording this video. But um, if you uh, have experienced these kinds of things and you have a different perspective, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. And um, for those of you who haven't experienced suicidal ideation, please try to keep this in mind. Um, and if somebody reaches out to you, please recognize their bravery for doing so. They may not be able to take the compliment, but but recognize that they really um, took a huge step and took a huge risk in in talking to you about it. Um, you know, if if there's somebody who suffers from depression. Okay. Bye.